Hi, good evening. This is Jessica Gulick, Vice President of the Women's Society at Cyber Jitsu. Welcome to our webinar, Career Conversations with Women in Cybersecurity. Uh, this month we got something special going on. We have the ladies from the Cyber Jitsu Girls Academy joining me here. So very excited to have two wonderful women um, and learn about their careers in cyber, talk about some tips, and hopefully give you some information about the uh, Girls Academy as well. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, one last thing. If you have questions, do look to the right. Um, enter your questions uh, there. We'll be taking the questions uh, and doing Q&A throughout this informal conversation. And uh, I will go ahead and start with um, Candice uh, is the Chief of Girls Education for the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. Candice, can you give us a little bit about your history? Hi, good evening. Thank you so much, Jessica, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And um, a little bit about me. I'm actually not your typical cybersecurity person, but I used to have my own women-owned small business for telecommunications and technology. I did that for 10 plus years. So I've always been an advocate for women in technology, entrepreneurs, et cetera. Um, the way I came about this is uh, with WSC and CGA because we're the extension of WSC and we focus a lot on STEM with an emphasis in cyber uh, for this next generation is actually through my daughter. She had joined the program about uh, three years ago. And I loved it so much and was very passionate about uh, everything that the organization did and wanted to get more involved. I became a volunteer and I started learning a little bit and picking up on things. And eventually it took me to the role from program manager to now chief of girls education, kicking off um, currently three different programs, um, which I feel they've been pretty successful. We're in our fifth year now and uh, we've reached over 275 girls approximately. Um, so just kind of a little bit of everything right there. Um, but, you know, in any case, um, moving forward, uh, currently I work part-time with another government contractor, and our company does do some cyber work. I also do a lot of the security stuff. So as we all know, there's um, cybers around us. It's all over the place, and we all have to be prepared and ready for it. So through that, I'm able to integrate some of the cyber um, uh, skills and practices uh, into what I'm currently doing as far as the uh, information technology side and helping to manage a, um, I guess, a risk-free program, if you want to call it that. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, Candace is a bit humble. Uh, over the last five years, 275 girls have gone through the Girls Academy. Um, and she's done a wonderful job in partnering with Katie, who we're about to hear from, uh, in setting up the program and making it the success it is today, as well as uh, creating a vision for the future so we can continue to extend it and reach more girls, uh, not just in the Northern Virginia area and D.C., but uh, throughout the nation. So, Candace, thank you for everything you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Katie, let's hear some about you. Um, talk to us about your story. How did you get involved in um, cybersecurity? I, I should let everybody know, Katie's role is as program manager. So she leads the day-to-day in, uh, day, uh, day -day activities of the Girls Academy. Uh, but Katie, we want to hear about your story. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on as well. This is a lot of fun. I'm excited to be here. Um, so my story, like I found so many women in this field and just professionals in cybersecurity, is not that traditional. Um, I heard from someone else this week who used to be a rock climbing instructor and is now like one of the smartest developers I know. So um, my story started, I went to a women's college, uh, Smith College in Massachusetts, and I graduated in 2007 and really wanted to go into journalism. That was kind of my focus. And that was kind of a tough time in the economy for jobs. So um, I struggled a little bit to get a job. I applied to probably 30 or 40 entry-level positions. Finally got something doing open source research for two years. Wasn't really that happy. Um, at that point, luckily, I met my boyfriend, now husband, who was like, hey, you might be interested in doing government intelligence analysis. So you should just try applying for government agencies and see what happens. Um, I'm really lucky that I met him um, because that was great career advice. I just kept applying, and uh, finally the Department of Defense hired me. Um, 
was one of those things where I always joke that they couldn't afford someone who was trained up in cybersecurity, so they hired me. Um, but actually, after I joined, I asked the person who was on my interview panel, I said, well, I know anything about cybersecurity, and, like, why do you hire me? Um, and she said, well, you seemed really smart, and you'd clearly done your research about the agency. And when we asked you those questions, you knew them. So that's a tip right there. You know, do your research about the company, and you never know. Like, maybe they're just looking for someone entry level who's smart. Um, so, yeah, that was in 2009, and I have never looked back. Um, I hesitated to take the job because I was like, well, cybersecurity is boring. It's all about, like, looking at lines of code. But once I got in, um, I've worked as a cyber threat analyst looking at cyber threat intelligence, which is all about what adversaries are doing. And to me, the thing that's fascinating about cybersecurity is really the adversaries behind it. There's someone behind that keyboard who has an intention and is driving what's happening on the, on the computer. Um, and that's what really fascinated me is tracking those adversaries. So I worked for the DOD for a while. And then, like many government employees, I flipped defense contractors. I worked for Raytheon and Mantech. And then in 2015, I started working for the MITRE Corporation. Um, MITRE is a nonprofit organization, so I think of it as like halfway between government and private sector. Um, we work in the public interest, which I really like because I feel good about what I do, and it's you know in the public interest. I do some government support, and then I also, over the past two and a half years, almost three years, have worked on this great project called MITRE Attack. Um, which has gotten a lot of public recognition. Um, so I'd encourage everyone to go to attack.miter.org. Uh, basically, it's a knowledge base of adversary behavior. So my role in that is kind of looking at open source threat intelligence and um, contributing to that project and it's kind of a framework for what adversaries can do. You know, how do they get into your networks? How do they move around? So I've been really, really lucky. Um, I have a great team, and I've had a lot of cool opportunities with the attack team in particular. Um, I got to speak at B-Sides Las Vegas a few weeks ago. Um, it was great because some WSC members were there in the front row cheering me on. Um, and I got to do a webcast that same week at Black Hat with some people I really respect from FireEye. Um, and it's just been, it's been a whirlwind. But, um, yeah, it, it's a little bit surprising. You know, 10 years ago if I had told myself, hey, you're going to be in cybersecurity and loving it, uh, I never would have thought what that would have happened. So that's a little bit about my story and how I got to where I am now. That's wonderful. No, I appreciate your sharing. Um, so how was Black Hat? Both of you were there. What did you think this year? Candice, go ahead. Um, it was, uh, yeah. It was your first <laughs> well, year, right, Candice? It was my first year. It was really amazing. You know, a little overwhelming. Um, I <laughs> wish I had a chance to hit some of the sessions, but I was so focused at being at the booth and meeting new people and just, you know, talking about what we do and getting us to this national level, um, so to speak. So that, that was kind of my focus area um, during that week at Black Hat. But nonetheless, again, just um, phenomenal experience. And, you know, I was very lucky to be able to be part of that. Yeah, Black Hat is so overwhelming. Like any conference like that, you go on the expo floor and like there are hundreds of vendors and it's crazy. Um, <laughs> For anyone who's kind of going for the first time, I always recommend, like, get a con buddy. Um, if you don't know someone who's going already, like, there are tons of women on Twitter and myself who would ha be happy to, like, walk around with you and be like, okay, well, here's the con floor, and just ignore what they're saying and just get the T-shirt. Um, that's not totally true, but, I mean, it depends on how much time you have to listen to vendor pitches because it can be a lot of that. But, um, yeah, Black Hat was fun. It was very different for – for me, because Candace was working the booth diligently, and I was kind of running around going to meetings um, with folks. So it can be a very different experience. Um, one of the best pieces of advice that I got about cons, and I actually did this this year, was that if you're in a conversation with someone and, like, networking, don't abandon that conversation just to go to a talk. Because at so many of these conferences, their presentations are recorded. So you can always watch it later, but, like, meeting someone and having a conversation like that, um, you can't. You can't make that up very easily. So it sounds like that's what that's what Candace did a lot of, right? Talking to people who are interested in I cyber did. And, and that's such a great point. You know that that connection is just so important to have, and um, you know we need to sustain that. And um, I, yes, I, I totally agree. And I would have chosen that over trying to get over to a, a talk because, like you said, I, I know I can always check it out later after the fact. Yeah. Yeah, and a super cool thing this year, um, our like another women in tech organization, WISP, 
they had this amazing uh, DEF CON squad of women. Um, if for anyone's on Twitter, you might have seen this. They kind of tweeted that they were sending two women to DEF CON, and then within like a week, I think, uh, a ton of sponsors had reached out to them, and they ultimately sponsored 70 women to go to DEF CON, which was just amazing. Um, so it's exciting. You know, they're, it's definitely – uh, low ratio of women, like so many places mm. in this field, uh, but I think it's getting better, and that's that's pretty exciting. Absolutely, you know, one thing that I was or um, event I was able to attend real quick is I stopped in at the Diana Initiative as well, and that oh, yeah. was really cool. It was uh, really cool to get over there and see what they were doing, and um, you know, just to you know, women and men both there to support the this initiative. Um, so, yeah, I. I'm not able to compare, you know, the past cons or, you know, Black Hat, DEF CON, et cetera, but um, based on what I saw, you know, I saw a lot more women than I expected, so that was great. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. getting better, and I know the conference organizers are, you know, doing their best to make it a welcoming environment for women, which is awesome. So, yeah, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of security conferences because that is where you get this networking, like, it's amazing. There are some people that I will only see them once a year at Black Hat, but that's enough to have a quick conversation. Hey, what are you up to? What company are you with? And the next time you need someone at that company, hey, I reach out and, you know, I just saw you at Black Hat, so they're happy to do a favor for you. So super valuable in that aspect. Very cool. Yeah, I was bummed to miss it this year. Um, but it sounds like it went well and it looked like the uh, WSC party went pretty good. It seemed packed, so that was great. Oh, that was Yes, that was awesome. I mean, even the wait list. Uh, <laughs> we had such a wait list, and you could barely move. It was so packed. So it was very successful. Oh, that's fantastic, fantastic. Well, why don't we transition and talk about the girls? Um, you guys have been uh, supporting the girls program, and, and I know you work with a lot of women in cybersecurity. What's it like to work with girls um, in cybersecurity? Is it any different? Um, can you tell me some some things about your experience, what surprised you perhaps, and um, I don't know, any stories you can think to share with our audience? Yeah, um, I well, Katie, if you don't mind, I'm going to kick that one off right there. Um, it's, yeah, absolutely. It, it is so amazing, um, all these young ladies that we get coming through the program, just to see them grow and develop, um, become more confident. It, it's you know, you, you can't beat that, that's for sure. Um, one thing I would like to do is, obviously, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of this without some of our um, wonderful sponsors. You know, I have to say thank you to Mason Game and Technology. Um, they support our space over at George Mason University for our Cyber Patriot program. And then, of course, the Qualcomm Thinkabit Lab at Virginia Tech. That's um, hopefully going to be our home for a little while. Um, so they've all been wonderful, and again, they big advocates of our program. We've been there. We just started at the Think a Bit Lab last December, and uh, we've actually been at George Mason for uh, at least three, four, three years um, doing the Cyber Patriot program. But um, again, we wouldn't be able to, you know, run these programs without their support. So um, what we're doing right now is, you know, we're getting ready to kick off some new workshops in October, and um, We'll run those through June. They're once a month, and it's um, a variation of STEM or STEAM, you know, the, these, these buzzwords. Uh, but we offer a variety of workshops, and they don't build upon each other, which is great. So no one's going to feel like they've missed anything if they couldn't attend um, the workshop. But we try and do a variety of things and, of course, throw in an emphasis in cybersecurity. So that's been running really well. Um, we also have our Cyber Patriot, which um, our middle school team has consistently made it uh, for the last four years to semifinals. So we've been very successful. Our goal is, of course, to get our high school teams there. Uh, but this last season, we had two high school girl teams and one middle school team. And I think we're going to have at least that same amount of teams, possibly more. I've got a lot more interest um, this year. So I've been working on trying to kick that off. And we have our first session this Sunday, um, the 26th. And then Katie has been leading the Capture the Flag, the CTF effort um, with Christine, and that's been wonderful. I'll let Katie talk a little bit more about that, but, um, but it's great. And what, what I love about it is the retention. Um, a lot of these girls, you know, our goal is, is to keep them present, keep them engaged, and, you know, be able to offer a lot more so that they 
will help close that gap um, with women in technology and, you know, go on to be successful advocates and um, promote more cyber, you know, or anything STEM related engineering, because we definitely don't have enough of that um, out there. Um, but I guess just real quick story, um, there is one particular person that's really resonated with me that I've seen her go from our workshops to being very quiet, you know, her head down, hair is kind of covering her face, and um, you could barely hear her, you know, she would just kind of talk under her breath. And through this process, um, not only did she join our Cyber Patriot program, uh, but she also participated in CPF. And we've been working with InfraGuard with their cyber camps. And I've been sending girls over to them, which next year we're excited. We've locked down some dates. We're finally going to partner with InfraGuard and hold this uh, two-week cyber camp session at Marymount. Um, looking forward to that. But she went and went off on her own without anyone and has been just doing a lot more in this field. So I kind of look at that and, you know, just um, it makes me feel good that we've been able to help her become more confident and kind of grow out of the shell. And um, I can't wait to see what she's going to do next. Um, so, yeah, so that's a little story right there. How about yeah, you, Katie? Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, um, there's so many. Um, one of the things and the reason that I started volunteering for this organization in the first place is that I think back to when I was, you know, 14, 15 years old, I was so good at math. Um, and then kind of slowly over middle school and into high school, I kind of lost interest. And I remember there being like programming classes in my high school, but all the guys took them. And I just like think back and, wow, if I had had a CGA, would my career path have been a little bit different? I mean, I eventually got to cybersecurity, which I'm happy about. But I think back, and that's kind of what motivated me to get into this field um, or into this organization. And, you know, they're, my favorite thing and what makes it all worthwhile is, like, that moment of kind of recognition or, like, learning or when the light bulb goes off. And you can see that. My favorite is um, – we do something called Makey Makey, which is this little microcontroller. <laughs> Everyone should Google it. You hook it up to a computer, and you can do things like make a banana piano, and we teach them about circuits. So basically you hold one end, you know, the grounding cable, and then when you touch the banana, the piano plays. And we do this at, um, in our CGA workshops and also at STEM nights for different schools. And the light that goes off in, like, people's heads, these little kids, even, you know, Little, little kids, seven, eight-year-olds, they are amazed by this. And, like, they're creating a human circuit, and just their eyes get so big, and they're so excited, and they want to play with it. Like, that's the most exciting thing to me. Um, CGA specifically, I remember last year we had one girl who, throughout the year, you know, she came and she participated, but a lot of, like, the hands-on coding stuff she wasn't so into. And then there, I remember um, there, we did our robotics workshop um, we do a Lego Mindstorms robots, programming those, and it's very hands-on. And you get to, like, put the robots on the floor and make them follow this red line. And I remember she was so excited, that workshop, and she kind of lit up. And it was just exciting to me and a good reminder that different people learn differently. You know, some girls are going to really love coding Python. Some are going to love Makey Makey. Some might like robotics. And that's okay. Kind of our goal in these workshops, we cover a lot of different topics from – October through um, the summer, and, mm -hmm. you know, different things might resonate with different girls, and that's the, the fun, really fun thing is just kind of seeing that light bulb go off in, in their minds. Um, they're learning something new, and, you know, we don't expect that they're going to be master programmers when they leave these workshops, but if they've gotten exposed to a few new things, to coding, to robotics, then I think we've done our jobs. Yeah, and, you know, Katie, you know, I just received an email in fact, yesterday it was from a parent of one of our students um, who participated in this past season's workshop. And as much as she loved the workshops, um, she's decided that she's leaning more on the program side, you know, maybe robotics. Um, and so, you know, her, her mom was naturally reaching out, you know, are there some other options? You know, of course, she's thinking about going through the program again um, because she enjoyed it so much but wanted to see what else was out there. So naturally, I provided her with uh, 
you know, a few names or the organizations that would have some um, classes that she may be interested in. But, but the fact is, is that, you know, by doing this, these STEM workshops and giving them a taste of everything, um, she was able to really kind of decide what it was that she was, that interested her. And maybe, you know, maybe cyber wasn't quite her thing and that's okay. Um, but again, she's doing something in that field. So that alone means that we had some impact um, on what she could potentially be doing in the future. So that was really um, exciting. And as Candace mentioned, we have so many things going on. Um, Cyber Patriot, that's a great program that you know Candace and Amy and Mike have been leading. Um, we also kicked off this summer. My colleague uh, Christina Johns from MITRE had the idea, hey, there are a lot of capture the flag competitions coming out for like middle school and high schoolers. So why don't we try doing some CTF workshops and for middle and high schoolers? Um, we're focusing on high schoolers mostly now and kind of see how it goes. So that's been a big challenge, but a lot of fun this summer as we've had a series of four capture the flag workshops. Last one's actually Saturday. Um, I need to remember mm -hmm. to order pizza. Um, <laughs> so it, it's been a lot of fun. We've covered, you know, Python. Um, this Saturday is reverse engineering. And then the plan is that there are a lot of these CTFs that pop up throughout the year for middle and high schoolers. Um, so kind of bringing together the girls that have been through the workshops or others who are interested and competing as a team. Um, one of the challenges I found with adult uh, CTFs is that they are such an intimidating environment. Um, you go in and everyone knows what they're doing and they're like master developers and they already have code to like solve all the challenges and you're sitting there like, how do I do this? Um, and I should mention that WSC actually has a competitions team led by a wonderful woman named Marcel Lee who also organizes women, um, professional women, to uh, compete in Capture the Flag competitions. Again, a more welcoming environment um, than you know, walking in and being intimidated by all these people who know what they're doing. No, it's an opportunity to learn. And I always say that CTFs are a great way to kind of get your feet wet in the field, especially for someone who's trying to break into cybersecurity um, because so many employers mm -hmm. want hands-on experience, right? And how do you get a job in cybersecurity if you haven't had experience already? It's just catch-22. But CTFs are a great way that you can kind of do these competitions, and they're supposed to be fun, and they are, but you're also learning. They have, you know, cryptography challenges, reverse engineering challenges. So as you do those, that's hands-on experience that, you know, if you're in an interview and someone asks you, hey, how have you handled this kind of thing in cybersecurity, you say, well, you know, I haven't had a job, but let me tell you about this challenge that I cracked in a CTF and how I, you know, went through um, solving this problem. So that's a great way. Um, so, you know, now that they're opening them up to high schoolers and middle schoolers as well, we wanted to get the girls involved. And so just another kind of offering we have for middle and high school girls um, in this area. We're really excited about that. That's great. So I'm curious, um, volunteering can be hard. We're all balancing a lot of different things. Is there things that you have learned from your volunteer experience, um, whether – uh, you know, soft or hard skills kind of thing that have contributed back to your professional life? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. For me, um, I guess it's that everything's not going to always go perfectly. Um, <laughs> one challenge I'd share from this is, I guess, I don't know, maybe it was a year and a half ago when I first took over being Candace's assistant. She was out of town and I was running a STEM night alone. And I went to the elementary school and said, hey, I'm here for the STEM night with the CGA. And they said, there's no STEM night here. And I went to the wrong elementary school. Apparently there are two Patrick Henry <laughs> elementary schools, one in Alexandria and one in Arlington. So I got the wrong address. And I was panicking because I was running late, and I'm, like, freaking out, and I'm trying to call the other volunteers. And I was so panicked. And Mary, who's our wonderful, I think, think chief operating officer now, I forget her mm -hmm. title, um, she mm -hmm. does everything. She emailed me, and she's like, it's going to be all right, just to relax. And I was so stressed that night. And then, you know, since then, things go wrong sometimes. Instructors get sick. People can't make it. Uh, software doesn't work the way that you expected it to, and you have to go do something different. And that's okay. And, you know, I guess in my work life, I don't, I'm always a perfectionist, and I strive for the best, and I do in everything still. But realizing that, 
you know, in work and in volunteer and in personal life, things are not always going to go as planned. When that happens, I need to stop freaking out. That's just something I do. I get very nervous and panicked. Just don't freak out. Take a deep breath and figure something else out and, you know, be resilient and problem solve. And that's one lesson that I've really transferred from CGA to my work life and my personal life as well. Great example. How so about I, you, Candace? <laughs> you know, I have to concur with Katie. Um, you know, I still am somewhat a perfectionist, and, um, you know, I've gotten a little bit better, a little bit more relaxed, and realized that not everything is in my within my control. And, um, of course, prior to Katie, uh, Veronica, when I, you know, another uh, wonderful um, partner in crime when, uh, when I took on this role, um, I'll never forget the night that, uh, you know, Thank goodness I was able to call her. We were literally on the phone three, four in the morning. Um, last minute changes. The instructor got sick, or something happened, an emergency, and you know, thank goodness, um, you know, I had I had her to help, kind of, you know, assist, and we got through this. And I guess you just you you just find things and you you make it work. Um, I don't know. There's been so many things that have happened. <laughs> like, where do I begin? Um, but, uh, you know, like Katie said, I guess, you know, again, just realizing that, okay, you know, not everything is always going to go the way it's supposed to go. And, and, you know, we're, we're human we can only do so much and, um, we just make it the best. And I think, you know, communication is so important, um, in this type of thing and what we're doing is that, you know, if we can communicate and just be honest and say, look, (laughs) this is what's going on. Um, we're going to figure it out and we'll work something out. Then at the end of the day, everything's going to be okay. Um, so, yeah, and that's yeah. a message I try to pass along to all our volunteers as well. You know, people come and everyone has varying skill sets and backgrounds. Some are, you know, cybersecurity professionals, some aren't. And, you know, that's okay. If you don't know everything and you can't help every girl with every line of code, that's fine because we need everyone. And, what we, what's really important is that these girls see that we're there, we care about them, we care about what they're doing. It doesn't matter if, you know, everything works perfectly, but that, you know, they've learned something, they've had a positive mm-hmm. experience, they've had an opportunity to kind of talk to women in the field and women who can mentor them and just, you know, show interest in them. And, you know, that's that's the most important part of it. So well, I think we're, and, we're, you know, we're learning to relax. <laughs> Exactly. But but not only that, I think the other aspect that, you know, the one thing that I love about what we do and even WSC, you know, number one, WSC and CGA, we're so diverse. Um, but, you know, with our girls program, the one thing that we focused on is how can we, how can we help these young women, um, you know, not just be great technically, but be more successful as young adults and transitioning into whether it's college or going out into the field and working, um, you know, something that we're going to try this this year, especially with Cyber Patriot, um, and it's been a little bit of a challenge because it's communication and communication within those groups. So we've actually got some wonderful new tech mentors that are coming in that have, um, that's, you know, PhDs in communications and public speaking. Uh, They also do emotional intelligence. And they're going to come in and they're going to take a look and they're going to assess and they're going to be there to work with the girls. Because to me, in order to be successful in these competitions, you need to be able to communicate. You have to communicate and you have to talk through these things and and know who's got their strengths and weaknesses and how to delegate this task or that. Um, You know, these are real life skills that I think we're bringing into this program but I don't see many programs. I mean, I guess I'm kind of too busy to go and see all the other programs, but I feel like we're pretty unique, um, you know, compared to some of these, uh, the other ones that are out there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm I really would excited. Add on to that. I would emphasize that, yeah, the communication piece is so important in a professional environment, uh, whether you're in cybersecurity or not. And I found, I was just talking to someone yesterday, actually, who said, you know, so many people in this field have great technical skills, but it's those people who can clearly communicate about their work to others and present right. and talk to people and network. Those are the people who are really successful. 
And that really mm-hmm. resonated with me. Um, and so, you know, it's amazing. You guys have done an amazing job. And I remember last year, you know, Mike teaching these girls about, you know, leadership and communication. And I think that's such an important part of, of that experience and, and learning. And that will set them up for success in the future, too. No, I yeah, agree. I, mean, I, I would actually say that um, I've seen competitions. I've run multi-generational competitions with middle, high school, and professionals and college students. Um, we actually did it in uh, Colorado uh, a few years back, and believe it or not, it was um, it was the high schoolers that won, and they beat mm-hmm. out the professional cybersecurity uh, folks. And the reason is because um, if you looked at the table as the hours went by. It was the high schoolers that were constantly communicating. I've got this yeah. over. What are you seeing, et cetera? Um, and if you went over and you said, who's lead? Because uh, we usually do when we talk to them. Um, they would identify who was the leader and who brought what skills, et cetera. If you went over to the, um, and I did, I walked over to the professional company organization, and, and I said, hey, what are you guys doing? You guys are really quiet. They, they had basically taken a situation. They would each had a server, and they were just maintaining it themselves. It was, it was literally five uh, independent workers and not working at a team, not communicating, and there really wasn't a lead. So it was, it was interesting to see. This year's uh, Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, CCDC, the winning team had a female leader. And I remember when they interviewed that team, they said the communication was key in their team, and like that's why that there were so many other teams that had those technical skills, but they had the communication, and that's – they attributed that to their success. That's great. So I've got, well, I got you know. Uh huh. Go ahead. No, Jen. go ahead. Go ahead, Candice. Oh no, I was just gonna, you know, just you know, again, add on to that, just how important it is when you get out there, um, you know, especially, you know, when you've got the technical people and you've got the sales and the operations teams and this and that. There's always this. It, it's very hard. A lot of the times you'll find this gap, you know, in that communication, and um, that's when, you know, things go wrong and, you know, you're not effective. So, you know, hopefully, yes, you know, we'll be able to close that gap as well. And, um, you know, not only will these young ladies be able to do the technical side, but they'll also be able to speak to it and, um, and then teach it to others and, you know, implement, you know, or do what they're trying to do. Yeah, and I would add to that um, that I think sometimes there's uh, this programmer culture um, among men especially that you have to be super technical in this field, and that's just wrong. Um, You know, there are developers and there are pen testers and there are malware reverse engineers, and those are great skills, but without the people who can talk and present, without the compliance people, without the legal people, without the technical writers, without the project managers – this field wouldn't happen. So I think it's so important not to undersell those other skills. Absolutely. So I have a question for you because we, we typically get this. Um, does it matter that it's a girls' program? I mean, do you feel like that adds value? Do you feel um, – what, what do you think about that, the fact that these, this is a girls' academy? Well, I'm going to tell you right now I'm very passionate about keeping this a girls' academy um, and it's nothing against the boys. I mean, I have a son, and, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, I've, I've seen more boys' programs out there, and they tend to dominate, and the amount of, even though they're open to, you know, the, the girls as well, you won't find many girls. And I think that, um, you know, traditionally, it's always been, and Katie, I'm sure you can, you know, with your experience growing up and, you know, having this really excelling in math, but then kind of getting to that point where it's like, oh, my goodness, um, the the lack of confidence, you know. And this is a tough age, the middle school and high school. There's so many different things going on. And I think the environment that we provide really facilitates um, just a, a good, safe environment where they can be themselves and explore and, you know, channel their energy and ideas, Um through, you know, this passion or this interest they have uh, with, with STEM. Um, so, I, I, again, I, I know we've gotten some pushback here and there, and some people may think differently, but um, I will always stand by this remaining a girls program and, um, 
you know, keeping it that way, hopefully as long as we can. And hopefully people will eventually understand. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I went to women's college, so, you know, I believe passionately in that as well. You know, you need to create this environment where women feel comfortable. And that was, you know, part of the reason I attended a women's college is that every everyone there was a leader and they were women, and I was surrounded by that. And there's just something so powerful about getting in this room of women who are all kind of working together. Um, an example of kind of this environment, I was just at a Splunk developing super women in cybersecurity event yesterday, and they did a Capture the Flag competition, and it was the exact opposite of any CTF I've ever been in that had men in it as well. Usually um, it's like cutthroat, like, if you get a wrong answer and get points deducted, people are so mad at you. This was amazing. It was so collaborative. And women saying, hey, that's cool. You got a wrong answer. Like, let's work on it together. Or like, hey, we're just learning here. Like, it's fine if we don't win. And, you know, it's just different. It's a different feel. And you know, like Candace said, especially when you're a teenager, you know, you might not want to speak up if there are men in, or, you know, other boys or men in the room because you don't want to seem like you're too smart or you don't want to intimidate them. And I, I remember what it was like to be a teenager. It was rough. And so if we can remove that challenge and just get them to focus on the content and on learning and not have to worry about the social stuff or how they look or appear or, you know, that, that we're doing them a service. Um, so I'm mm-hmm. also really passionate, you know, and that's, I did research in high school about single-sex education and the benefits of that. And, you know, the research shows that there is value in women's colleges, women's education. And I think the same thing applies here. And um, I think it was in one of the movies about women's colleges, the quote that I always like is that, you know, we build our women up so high that no one will ever knock them down. And, you know, there are some people, yeah, some people that argue too. that, you know, if you if you just keep people in a women's college or just a girls' academy, they're never going to be able to interact with men. Well, I reject that. You know, I have a husband. I work with all men, and I interact with them just fine. But you, yeah. know, you, you really build up that confidence in an environment of all women, all girls, and, you know, you can set them up, and they have that confidence, and that will take them far. Yeah, you can definitely stand your ground, that's for sure. It yep. changes the dynamic for girls, too, because I went to all-women's yep. college, Texas Women's, for the first couple of years. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, and it, it changes. It, there's something about when you go into a room with other guys, you're very aware of it, and you're more aware of all the stuff that you don't need to be aware of, if that makes sense. Yep. Like going into women's college, I I had all the confidence in the world. I would say I had no filter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I didn't care what I looked like. I didn't care what people thought about me, you know, not in a negative way, but I was just very free, if that makes sense. It makes um, sense to mm-hmm. me because that was the same way, yeah. It was awesome. It was a freeing environment, right? You can just focus on what you're thinking and, like, you know, philosophical discussions about life and, like, learning who you are and not having to worry about, like, does your hair look good for an 8 a.m. class? Like, <laughs> that was my experience at least. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's nice. I totally uh, didn't have that experience. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, on the other hand, too, I was actually very lucky and very rare that, you know, I have um, a very close relationship with my father who has always, um, he, he treated me as, as if I was his son. I mean, he did not hold me back from anything. He allowed me to go and explore and do everything that any other, you know, boy or guy could do. And I think, um, you know, being so lucky to have that, I, when I started my own business, it wasn't as intimidating because I was able to um, be on that level. So, so while it would have been wonderful to have had that experience and I can only imagine how much more I could have thrived in that type of environment, I do feel lucky and it is also rare that, you know, I was able to, um, you know, uh, have that, that experience, um, if that makes That's sense. Awesome. And, That's you know, I have really to say cool. one thing that I love so much now is that we have a lot of dads that come and volunteer and men yeah. that come and help with the program. And I think it is awesome because, you know, they are supporting their daughters, and it's usually the dads. It's always the dads who are dropping them off and bringing them, you know. I mean, these are dads that want to see their daughters succeed and be strong women. Um, so I think that's wonderful, and I guess that's where I really get excited, and, you know, um, it definitely hits a 
hits a spot, <laughs> you know, yeah, to see that great. happen. You know, Candace's husband, Mike, has been an incredible volunteer. I've had my two male coworkers, uh, Robert and Emmanuel, volunteered this year. So it's great to mm-hmm. have those male allies who care as much about increasing the percentage of women in this field because, uh, you know, the men I work with are like, you know, Katie, you're great at this. Like, how do we get more like you? And I'm like, well, just, just hire some more women. Um, that's the answer, right? <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah, that's so important exactly. is that, you know, yeah, we do WSC and CGA focus on women and girls, but our male allies are so important as well, and we couldn't do oh, yeah. without and them. Absolutely. We, you're absolutely right. And, you know, one thing that was really cool at Black Hat this year was, um, you know, when we were manning the booth, we had a lot of young men. I mean, you know, we're talking, you know, mid to late 20s, early 30s, you know, very techy looking, you know, kind of that stereotypical, but they would come by our booth and um, they would say, hey, where can I donate money? And it's like, what? You just want to throw cash down, you know, mm-hmm. donate That's to the program? Nice. They're like, they're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had we had quite a few that did that. They just literally took a chunk of money out and gave it to us for donations. And, you know, and they said they closed it out with, you know, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You know, we really appreciate it. We really, you know, we really support, you know, what, what you're doing with, uh, with women. So that, that was phenomenal. I don't know if that's happened in the past, but that was my first experience. I think we had that last year. That's really Uh, encouraging. You know, I'll say I, you know, I've been encouraged too by the men I work with who support me. You know, one of my colleagues came to the Cyber Jitsu Awards last, last week to support me as well as my husband. Um, there are so many men who, you know, really want and see the value of having more women in this field. Um, yes, just yesterday, the Splunk event I was at, my good friend Ryan Kovar was the one who kind of initiated that event because he's tired of there not being women in this field. So there's so many men who are passionate about this too. It's, it's That's great to hear though, Candice, that they wanted to put yeah. their money literally where their mouths are. So Absolutely. It was, it was wonderful. And, you know, and the thing was is they weren't doing it for recognition either. A lot of them wanted to yeah. remain anonymous. Right. So, you know, that's great. Cool. It was good stuff. So as we start to wrap up and give our audience some time to ask their questions, um, I'd like to know, um, CGA, what kind of help do you need? What are you looking for? Is there, uh, do you, are, are you guys looking for help in different programs or how can our audience assist you? Absolutely. So one thing, um, Katie is so incredibly busy and she's doing so phenomenal. I call her a rock star, <laughs> obviously. And then she was, she was recognized at the awards event and she, uh, she got the President's Award. So I was so excited and it was well-deserved. But with that being said and her becoming the celebrity now, we, we need more help and I really want to help her. I want to keep Katie with us and um, uh, keep the momentum going, but we need an assistant PM. So we need to identify someone to help us out. Um, I'd like to be able to focus on growing the program. So I need to have that time and not be running around at all these different events, um, you know, constantly. So that's that's our number one uh, priority right there. And we're also in need of a tech refresh. Um, It looks like we may have um, some new phones identified because we love to do this mobile app development workshop. So that's, uh, that's exciting. We just got the word on that today. Uh, but we need laptops. Even though we are at the Think a Bit Lab, it would be nice to have uh, more laptops uh, for the for the girls. So, so I guess an overall tech refresh would be good, and 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 more sponsorships. We want to be able to sustain the program, and in order to sustain the program, we need to get more sponsorships so we can grow that program um, and be able to offer these young ladies, you know, more, um, so that we can, you know, again retain them and help take them to that next level. Yeah, and in terms of volunteers, you know, in addition to an assistant for me, we also just need people to help out at our workshops. We'll be getting started in October, the second Saturday of, of the month, and anyone can sign up on womencyberjutsu.org and the events page. We'll post each month um, the date um, that the workshop is, um, and so anyone can sign up. We need technical and non-technical volunteers. Um, it's actually a great way for someone who isn't very technical to kind of learn. We have, you know, a Python workshop or a forensics workshop taught by an amazing woman named Marcel, and it's a way you can actually learn as you're kind of helping out. So um, we're also looking in particular for instructors to help out. Um, we're looking for someone to develop a Python class 
as well as mm-hmm. someone who's familiar with Scratch. So those are some needs that we have. Yeah, that's great. Definitely. What about locations to visit? I know um, last year you guys did the in-kick visit for the girls, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've got a few other opportunities. I know even through Mike's, uh, he's with the FAA, we've been trying to work something out to go and visit their um, uh, their cyber, um, you know, uh, facility. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that's one option. And um, Yeah, we've talked about see. doing something. We still have to set it up. We've talked about an idea where, I mentioned, you know, I'd recommend having a con buddy. If you ever go to a conference, yeah. talk about doing something where we would pair up someone, mm-hmm. you know, professional women with, you know, maybe a high school girl that was interested in cybersecurity to a local con, like besides oh, BC be or something else. Um, mm-hmm. And kind of, hey, you know, come along with me. Let's chat about what there is at this con. Here's a lockpicking village. Let's go to a talk. What do you think of that? Let's talk about some of the key points there. So we've talked about, um, it's another idea, but again, you know, Candace and I have so much to do and there's so little time in the day that we're really looking <laughs> there, for people there to is. help us out so we can do more like that. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, just logistics. It takes resources and logistics, as you ladies know. And, um, we, you know, we used to do that. We would take the girls um, to B-Sides DC in particular and we'd bring them with us to give them their first experience. And it was, it was great because they have the Crip kids there. So that was always a lot of fun. Um, but again, it's trying to manage that and um, coordinate that it, it it does take quite a bit. So hopefully we can get back into it. Um, yeah, something well, that's the next thing we need to work on. Ladies, this was wonderful. I, I really appreciate learning about you and learning about what you're doing with the girls at the San Francisco Girls Academy. Um, and, and I know our audience is, appreciative as well. So thank you both for joining me today. Um, For those in the audience, thank you for joining as well. This is a monthly thing, so please come back next month as well. You'll see uh, we've already got it listed on our channel, so it's pretty easy to register. Thank you so much, Jessica. And thank you again, Katie, for all your support. Yeah, no, thank you, Candice, and thanks, Jessica. This was fun. Wonderful. Um, You know, that concludes our, our webinar for tonight. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.